The Golden Globes is the first of all the award shows, and often it's the first of a long run of shows that an actress will have to attend. Hello, fashion. I missed the Golden Globes this year. I really missed going to LA. I really missed seeing the red carpet and doing that whole thing that I normally do the first week of every year. It was a really sad week and I, I missed my friends in LA. And when we started thinking about doing this series, I wanted to see some Golden Globes dresses. It's complicated to get the dresses because it is right after New Year and there aren't any new collections yet. So the last time there were collections, ready to wear is all the way back in fall and the couture is in late fall. So you don't have new designs to work from. All the movies that are nominated for a globe have had premieres, they've had press, they've been to film festivals in fall. So there really aren't that many dresses left at that point. So it's a really strange award show because of that from a fashion perspective. And it's also one that needs to be planned early. I usually start working on Globes dresses around Halloween and nominations are not out and the actresses never wanna talk about it because they think it'll jinx the process, but I can't let it go because if I just wait for the nominations, Every designer will already have an exclusive with someone. Any remaining red carpet dresses that were shown on the runway are taken. So in fall, I start thinking about what designer are we gonna work with? What designer really suits the actress? And I usually reach out to them and say, are you interested in working with them? Will you send me some sketches? I also get unsolicited sketches, which is really fun because I see who's interested and who's watching. Sometimes an actress is brand new and people don't know her. And I see, oh, fashion people are excited about this person and that's really fun. And sometimes, you know, there's an existing relationship which has been ongoing for years. So the first step in the process is to get sketches. Once the sketches come, I usually have a meeting with the actress and say, I swear this won't jinx it. <laughs> Just show me what you like and pretend it's for who knows what, it's for a premiere. And we pick one, sometimes two dresses. I often do have a backup dress for Golden Globes because it's really so early in the year and often the backup dress gets worn to SAG Awards or to BAFTA Awards or there's a Palm Springs Film Festival. There's just a number of award shows. So having two dresses for globes is something i regularly do because i know if one dress doesn't get worn it will get worn you know a week later depending on the schedule and also the location of the designer we have between one which is stressful and maybe as many as six fittings for a dress and then we all go away and we go home to see our families over the the winter holidays and all meet in la and I live in New York, so I'm thrilled to be in LA. It's warm and sunny. It's the first time that I see lots of people who I'm gonna see weekly. It just kicks off award season. There's a very stressful air about Globes. It's a bigger show than almost all the other ones because it has TV, because there's musical and comedy and drama. There are more people nominated for Golden Globes than there are for any of the other shows. So everyone's in town, every stylist, every hair and makeup person. So today, the dresses that I wanna show you are some of my very, very favorites. They're all different, but they are all really spectacular. The workmanship is breathtaking. I'm thrilled to see them again. I really miss seeing dresses like this. Let's go take a look at the dresses. So this is a Chanel Couture fall 2014 dress that Dakota Johnson wore to the Golden Globes. It was shown with a fully beaded jacket, but she wore it without the jacket, partially because I love Dakota, actually dressed quite simply. I think she's a woman who, while she's like very fashion-y and loves a sparkly dress, looks best when the dresses are quite simple in shape. I think it really suits her. There is a certain minimal quality to her style. What's really incredible about this dress is that all these tiny gray cubes of embroidery are made of concrete. 
So it's literally like the most mundane material mixed with some of the highest quality, most refined workmanship in the world. And then these sort of disco ball sequins, the, the crystals in sort of princess cut and baguettes and all the paillettes. I love that there's this really, really utilitarian pedestrian material combined with these beautiful sparkly luxury materials in one garment. Chanel told me it took 800 human hours to make this gown. Every single sequin or paillette was stitched by hand. Each one has one stitch. Every one of these little cubes has two stitches. All these paillettes done by hand, all these baguettes done by hand. It's pretty Especially extraordinary. Again. So this is a dress that Rachel Weiss wore to the Golden Globes when she was nominated for The Favorite. It's Celine, spring 2019. When I saw this dress on the runway, I was super excited by the silhouette. It was actually a short dress, like a little bit of a mini dress. And I looked at it and thought the proportion was so great, but I couldn't figure out how to use that short dress for anyone. It just it like didn't work for me in that way. And I, and I kept thinking about it and thinking, I need to use that dress for something. And then it came time to start thinking about Golden Globes dresses when Rachel was nominated. And I was like, I wonder if that dress will work. So I contacted Celine and asked if Eddie Salman would make it long. And they said yes. So this is where we got this dress. It's a reworking of a runway look to be made into a gown for an award show. And what I really love about this dress is that all of this white sort of harlequin romance is then paired with this really completely slim matte black column. And I think that it does this incredible thing to the silhouette where you have sort of like this grand bust and light near the face. Again, the armpits are covered. And then you have this beautiful, simple black line underneath. I felt like this would also suit Rachel because her coloring is so monochromatic as well. She has such dark hair and such pale skin. And she tends to look really beautiful in white and oyster and really pale colors. But those colors can be hard to wear, especially in a gown. Something that pale can often make you look a little bit bigger or it can be just too bright. So what this did was like complement the skin you see is all right near white and it brings so much light to the face and to the shoulders and the arms and then really complements the body by being dark on the bottom. And I love the simplicity of it, that the whole thing is matte, but then there's this incredible, fun, sort of Harlequin moment. I also love this because it reminds me of a ruff. The favorite was about a queen. I just like the idea that we're sort of referencing English royalty. Flagstones, the lawn might break your fall. So this is Michelle Williams' dress for the Golden Globes when she was nominated for Manchester by the Sea. It is Louis Vuitton by Nicolas Gesquier. And Michelle has worked with Nicola for a long time. And we kind of had the idea that she was going to be nominated and started talking about it quite early, which I love because it gives us time to really get into it and do serious work on a dress that sometimes you just don't have the time so in the spring 2017 Louis Vuitton collection, Nicola used this technique, this fabric. So this is a corded lace. It's lace, but it's embroidered. And in photos of this dress, it looks like it's black and white. And what's interesting about it is that it's actually a pale gray velvet lace that then is corded, which means that someone has embroidered on top of the flowers. So it has a definite texture and three dimensionality. If I hold this up, you can see that it's sort of burnt through because the lace is cut out and applied to the tool and then embroidered on top. There's this really interesting quality. And then there's a white lining to sort of make it opaque so that you didn't see through it all the time because I find 
When you can see through a dress, you see it in a photo, there's a wishy-washiness to the image. You sort of lose the crispness of any texture or print. So I really do like it if something has a, like a back that makes it a little more opaque so that the dress actually presents itself instead of becoming sort of faded or amorphous looking. So what's truly spectacular about this dress in addition to the fabric is all the work that you might not have noticed or seen if you didn't see it up close. So there's actually a corset built into the dress with bones. There's this whole section of the dress from one side to the other is boned and every bone is sewn into this corded lace. And then there's a panel in here, which also was a signature of that collection. When I work with Nicola on dresses, we usually use elements from the show. We say, I love this fabric, I love this technique, I love this silhouette. There are elements of his latest show in all these gowns. They don't just come out of, of nowhere. They come from a combination of elements of things that he's already been working on and then thinking about the woman who will wear it. There's also this tiny little ruffle here, which I always think like a little bit of romance really suits Michelle and suits her personality. It's very much who she is. There's always a little bit of poetry or romance or prettiness in what she wears. And then there is this band, which we have pinned right here so that you can see. Her arm went inside this band. And what that does is change this from being just a an average strapless dress to having, it wasn't a sleeve, it was like a concept of a sleeve. And again, it hides that armpit upper arm thing that I like to discreetly hide if possible. We were trying to figure out the jewelry and how we would make it feel very Michelle, really, more than anything, how to make it feel her. And I had all these ribbons because I was thinking, is it a ribbon in the hair? Is it a ribbon on the wrist? I often like a velvet ribbon tied around the wrist with like a diamond bracelet or a velvet ribbon tied around a ponytail, for instance. And I got all these velvet ribbons and thought, what if we just tie a little bow? What if we just make a little choker? And instead of making a choker of diamonds and covering her with this jewelry the way we so often do at award shows, Maybe we just tie this simple little ribbon and have her go that way and have it be simple. And maybe that's what makes it modern. We tried it and we all liked it. And so that's what she wore on her neck is a little velvet ribbon tied in a bow right here. What the black ribbon did was create this tension where you saw this as a graphic dress. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing these dresses as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, ring the bell, and leave any questions in the comments. Bye.